That was a message that the Lord God in heaven was speaking through the Holy Spirit unto the latter church of Christ. He said, there will be a time for your latter visitation. The first rain has taken place during Pentecost, but there will be a time for the latter rain that is prophesied in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 32, also in the book of Haggai chapter 2, verses 9 on, when he said, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former glory. And he said, it would be so important for you at that time, it will be so important and critical that you are able to recognize your hour of visitation. Hallelujah. And it was eventually, and it still remains to date, a spiritual monument when the eastern gate is closed, facing the Mount of Olives, it remains a prophecy and a spiritual monument unto the latter church of Christ, unto this end time church. It remains a monument that says, listen, if you fail to recognize your hour of visitation, when the Holy Spirit has visited you, to prepare you for the rapture, then the gates of heaven will be closed unto thee. You see that? The gates of heaven will be closed unto you. And that's why you see that the foolish virgins, when the Lord was speaking about them to the church today, He meant that if you be like them, with minimal knowledge that I am the Lord, I am Christ the Son of the living God, only through me can you inherit the new covenant, and yet you are not able to embrace, you remain in the level of theology, the level of the teachers of the law the level of the Pharisees, the level of the Sadducees, the level of human knowledge, the level of the teachings of schools of prophecies that you see in the world today. If you remain at that level of reasoning using your mind, you will miss your moment of visitation, and you will not grow in the Spirit, and you will not be able to see the rapture of the church. Isn't that absolutely amazing that the Lord even spoke to the church through this? That's the same thing you see in the book of Matthew 23, verses 37 to 39. And this is what he says here, precious people. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. When the Lord was speaking the parable of the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins and the rapture of the church, the wedding of the Lamb of God, it remained as a warning to the church. The final message that you get from there is, He warned the church to prepare that's important you prepare in the Holy Spirit by receiving your hour of visitation so you may be able to be infilled, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, so you may be able to avail yourself as a vessel that is constantly infilled, so you may grow to full stature, even reach the spotlessness of the Bride of Christ, so you may enter into the Kingdom of God, the rapture. But he said, If you operate in minimum anointing of the schools of theology, the minimum anointing of human wisdom, of using human reasoning to understand the word of God, to incorporate the modern Christianity, to incorporate the world into your Christian walk, like the five foolish virgins did, now this is what will happen to you. You will remain desolate. Desolation will hit you like it hit the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. Eastern gate is closed. Facing the gates of heaven. That means you will be like the foolish virgins. You will not enter the rapture. And you will enter straight into the abomination of the desolation. Which is the tribulation. And that happens after the rapture. So that is the message that the Lord is speaking to the church. That she may get into the preparing mode. And prepare herself. Because he will fulfill every letter of the word spoken here. Isn't that something mighty to the church? But I want us to go to another level now. Let us move to the higher level now. Let us look at the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 9. 
and Matthew chapter 25. What is the link between these two? Hallelujah. To begin with, I want us to read from Ephesians chapter 5. We are now getting deeper and deeper into this parable that Christ Jesus was speaking to the church about the wedding of the Lamb of God. And we know that that is the most important day in the calendar of all events in heaven and in the church. That's why he kept emphasizing about this. No wonder in the book of Matthew chapter 22, he still talks about this wedding here, where he is emphasizing the need to prepare as you are wearing the gown. Listen to this, somebody. There is revelation here. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, let us read verses 30 to 32, even as we link up Revelation 19 and the parable of the five foolish virgins. Let us look at Ephesians, somebody. Chapter 5 of Ephesians, verses 30 to 32. Look at what he says here. He says, For we are members of his body, hallelujah, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Do you see that, somebody? Verse 32, he says, This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Hallelujah. He says a mystery, but by the way, get this clearly. I'm not talking about the physical marriages you have here. I am talking about Christ and the church, which is the rapture. Listen to this, somebody. Verse 33 says, However, each one of you also must love your wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect the husband. So why have I brought this in here? at this new level that I'm bringing you in. Listen to me very carefully. It's very critical. The Lord here is drawing attention to one thing. He is introducing the concept and the aspect of separation. He is saying one would separate from her mother and her father to unite with the husband, just like the husband separates from his mother and father, so the two become one flesh. Essentially, that's what the Lord implied in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 23. He said, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. You see that? And now he has introduced in an aspect of separation. You see very clearly, he says, if anyone wants to be the bride of Christ, then they must essentially and practically separate from the flesh. Hallelujah. The flesh is the miniature is the small version of the world that lives in us. And to the greater magnitude, must separate from the general world. You see that somebody? So now he's saying that this wedding of the Lamb of God is essentially tied to one single practice called separation. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing, somebody? And this separation that the Lord is emphasizing here, is saying the church... That is you that have stepped out must separate from the world. So you begin to see very clearly that which the five wise virgins did, which the five foolish virgins did not. So separation became a key issue here. That means the five wise virgins were able to separate. Hallelujah. While the five foolish virgins were not able to separate. But what is it about the life and the identity of the five wise virgins that allowed them to separate? And you see very clearly that the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They had oil. Now we are moving to the role of the oil. Now we are moving to the transformation that they were supposed to go through as they stepped out with their lamps into the darkness. So there was a growth process. So the Lord is talking about the growth that the church needs to go through as she separates. And he says, you cannot accomplish separation, both spiritual separation and physical separation, until you receive external force, external support. That is the anointing, the added anointing of the Holy Spirit. And let's move in the next level, somebody. And you see very clearly here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, to 20. I'm still reading on the same book of Ephesians, verses 
18 to 20 he talks about the same thing still. He says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart unto the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now he is bringing in another factor. He says, separation is critical, which is the main distinguishing factor between the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. And you see that he says, for you to be able to united with him, to be flesh of his flesh, born of his bones, which means to wed him, you must have separated from your mother, from your father, from the world, and now lived to unite with him. Love him and live for him. You see that? And he brings it to another level. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, on he says, But you must be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. And now when you are filled with the Spirit of the Lord, then you are able to operate in the Word of the Lord, speaking in psalms, in hymns, and praising the Lord, which means living the Word. Hallelujah. And that tells you very clearly that the separation that the five wise virgins attained was through the empowering power and authority of the added anointing of the Holy Spirit that allowed them to separate even further as they were growing and maturing in the things of the Spirit, even in the likeness of Christ, the only thing that would have allowed them even to wed Christ, to be in the likeness of Christ. You see that? And that separation now, he brings it to another level, and he says, was only achieved by the Holy Spirit. But then in the book of Ephesians 5, verses 18 on, he is telling you that, there must be a willingness of you as the church to avail yourself as a vessel to be infilled and filled and filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you are filled and filled and filled as an available vessel, then now you are not filled with the drunkenness of the wine, the evil, but with the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then now you are able to walk spiritually, to do the things of the word of the Lord, the things of the Lord. And when you are filled and filled and infilled more and more with the Holy Spirit as you grow, then you are able to emit the right light. That is the light now that will be able to yield fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Do you understand this, somebody? That is now the true quality of the light of Christ, of the life of Christ, that is resident, that is present in the salvation of our Lord that came through Christ Jesus. And that's the only way that the dying world, the lost souls, that the evil world, the world that is in darkness, can be able to see you and see the image of Christ because they see the fruit of the Spirit, because you have been infilled, because you have made yourself available and the Spirit has filled you, yielding the fruit of the Spirit, and meeting the light that comes from Christ, and then they can receive Christ in the end time church. Do you understand now what it is that the five foolish virgins did not do, which the five wise virgins did? And I told you from the beginning of this segment that if you will be able to understand what it is that the five foolish virgins did, you can avoid it, and then be able to do what the wise virgins did and enter the rapture. So it boils down to the fact that the five wise virgins were able to avail themselves as vessels that were infilled by the Holy Spirit. No wonder, he says, they carried the jar of oil. While the five foolish virgins, much as they separated out, much as they denied themselves the things of the world by separating out, they denied themselves their fellowshipping in the general churches, the things, the pleasures of the earth, they still failed to enter. Because the Lord said, they did not avail themselves for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that an amazing revelation unto the church? ¿Qué sería de mí si no me hubieras alcanzado? 
¿Dónde estaría hoy si no me hubieras perdonado? 